17,000 kids in the United States suffer from something called JM. But there's an organization trying to find a cure, and there's a local lady. We call her the Ninja Nana. This is Pauline Lenz with uh, CureJM.org. You're sort of an unofficial spokesperson for this organization that was established just a few years ago. But tell us first what JM stands for. Okay, juvenile myositis is the cover for juvenile dermatomyositis and juvenile polymyositis. Dermatomyositis, that is where you have both the skin and the muscles involved. When you get into the polymyositis, you're talking about just muscles. Now, this is a rapid autoimmune disease. Yes, yes. I call it a hyperimmune system because the immune system is going so fast that when it sees a virus, it mm. can be a sunburn, it can be a live vaccine, it can be uh, basically a cold or a flu that will trigger it. Mm. And in these children, we don't know why. Their immune system looks at this virus, goes after it, attacks it, and instead of going back to where it's supposed to live happily, it continues to destroy the skin and the muscles. And now, this is a, a disease that is contracted by, I believe, three in one million kids every mm -hmm. year. Three out of one million. You got involved because your grandson contracted this, one yes. of 17,000 across the country. How do the symptoms, uh, did they appear to him? How young was he when he got it? Um, you know, we look back on pictures and we see signs of the rash. Uh, probably, it, you know, it could have been six months, it could have been 10 months. Um, my daughter was being told that it, that it was eczema. And that's, you know, that's no hard feelings against the doctors. Do they know, really? No. The doctors? No, 97% of all doctors in the world will never see a case of this disease. This is video you're seeing of uh, some of the, the physical symptoms. You saw the rash on, on the child's knuckles and face. Cure JM is an organization that was founded by a couple of parents. Who, I believe their son had this. You can see the smiling faces there of the kids. Um, but there's, there's no, no cure. And right now, what's the treatment? Oh, the treatment is, is pretty much as bad, if not worse, than the disease. Because the kids are started out on Sumadral IVIGs. That's an IV that is giving them the highest doses of steroids. Um, they're they're going to puff up just from that IV. Mm -hmm. But it also gives pretty much of a, it pulls the symptoms back into a non-dangerous point. Then comes the uh, daily steroids. Some of these kids are on, you know, 60 to 100 uh, grams of steroids three or four times a day just to keep everything under. So you know what that does to people who swell up. Okay, it's an anti-inflammatory. Then the weekly chemo shots. Mm. Um, and, you know, that goes on. That's the last medication that's taken off of it. And it does affect their quality of life. I want to throw, some, throw you a, a tape of two children who uh, have JM. Listen to this. She said, you have to be hospitalized immediately because it had affected my diaphragm and my breathing and all that. It was hard because I couldn't even pedal my bicycle anymore. I eventually had to be declared homebound. Three kids there. It, it, not much quality of life. They can't get out and play with their friends. No, our kids can't go in the sun, ever. They, they can go out for maybe a minute or two. And so they have swimming, to be... playing ball, riding a bike, no. walking your street is something you can't do. Right, unless you get close to being under control by the disease. But you never know when it's going to flare it off because we don't know what the triggers are mm -hmm. for each child. Every case of JM is treated differently. There are no Dr. Ryder, who is Lisa Ryder, who is at our Cure JM Research Center in Baltimore. Um, she has made the statement, no two cases of JM are exactly the same. Which makes it more and more difficult to treat it exactly. and to find cures for it because there might be 17,000 different cures. How close are we to finding some sort of um, medicine that can, that can help manage this? We're not. To be honest with you, we're not. One of the main reasons is because we are considered a rare orphan disease. 
uh, the drug companies do not see researching and helping to find me better me medication and a cure for our kids mm -hmm. because they see no profit. Is there, are there government studies, government funded research involved? No. You're on your own. We're on our own. So that is why Cure JM, the foundation, was created. Uh, it'll be 10 years this October 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it was created, because we have our own research centers in Chicago, run by Dr. Laura Pachman, and Dr. Lisa Ryder has it in Baltimore. And I've met both of these doctors. And to say they're dedicated to our kids is an understatement. So what you have to do in the lesson in the minute we have left is you have to hold fundraisers. Yes. You have to raise the money yourself. Yes, yeah, uh, we raise our own. We what's have, your next one? Okay, we have a comedy night on May 19th. It's gonna be held at the Tremainsville Hall by Warner's Corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two wonderful comedians that have donated their time. We are gonna have silent auctions and all kinds of dinner and things like this. What we need for that is we need donations of items. It's very hard to go out and get everything. And then we also have our, uh, a fundraiser, the one I'm lo really looking forward to. 15 seconds. Is Edna De La Cruz is coming to Shot Baker's Nook in Saline, Michigan. She wins cake contest, design me a cake. Learn more about this at curejm.org. She is Paula Lenz, the Ninja Nana, trying to teach us about that. See you next week on Content Company.